by the way, friends, all right, Doc Walsh here again, okay? You can call me John, right, from now on. As uh, my friends know, Natasha, who's my buddy, knows this, you just call me John. And um, yeah, that's the way we roll. So today is two days later, right? And uh, so to make today uh, uh, June 24th, and it'll be the second module for this week. Um, through a uh, conversation with um, uh, one of your classmates, Mary, she, uh, she actually suggested we just go ahead and have both lectures available at the very beginning of the week. So starting next week, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I will make sure that uh, over this weekend, I'll make two of these, these, um, these lectures where we kind of work through the material together, um, as you saw the first time. And, and that way, if, if you're, if you're uh, on your game early, uh, then uh, uh, then you can uh, go ahead and, and watch my video video early and, and go through the uh, material, you know, basically based on my guidance. And that's that's fine. Um, Mary's from Cinematic Arts, which is awesome, man, because I'm I'm really kind of video driven, and um, and I'm, I'm I'm all about the visual side of learning, and so um, any input I get from her is really, really cool. Now, again, we're looking here on, uh, this is at instructor mode right here. So I'm also just going to change it so you see it as you guys see it, student mode, all right? So we're entering student mode and there we're at right here. So this is the exact same type of uh, menu that you see. So this is your task bar over here on the left. Now go ahead and do, like I said last time, go ahead and look and in anticipation of what's coming up right here, um, you can take a look, for example, um, how-to folders, you know, that are very, very helpful, okay, the exams, and then, you know, the, the concept of what's coming up in terms of these really short reading things. These are just, both of these are super fun, all right, it's just all about being creative, and that's all it is, you know, because, you know, um, a big start, a big start part of, of fulfillment and reducing stress is, is really finding your creative sweet spot, and that's where we're at right here. Okay, so I'm going to go into our weekly module, okay, um, and um, uh, as you know, okay, so for those of you that haven't come in uh, already, uh, if I click right here, this is the, my original lecture, but this is being put into a playlist on YouTube, so you'll be able to follow them sequentially, okay? I'm going to go backwards in my browser here, okay? Um, and I'm going to put my second lecture in here, uh, Epigenetics. So, uh, I, again, we, we know that, you know, um, you guys are not biologists, but it's a really, really cool concept um, to grasp. And it really gives you a, a pretty strong feeling of um, a lot of about, you know, there's nature versus nurture. And it's really how, how um, things we do in life, the things we're exposed to in life can really have detrimental effects on our overall well-being, our biology. And our risk, as I'll go through it um, uh, today in the reading, and the reading is really thick and intense, and you just pull out of it the essence. And I'll show you that's what I'm going to do with you right now. You don't have to know all the molecular biology, but it, it really nails uh, what we're trying to get at. Okay, And it just shows you you guys can read these kind of journals and, and journal articles and still get what you want out of it. Um, so wearing my Relay for Life t-shirt. We do that every year. It's awesome. Okay. Um, and, it, and also, Patrick, uh, hats off to you. Um, uh, Patrick, thank me for, for being uh, kind of forth, you know, forthright about our personal situations. You know, and, you know it's, it's hard to be a human being. Remember the Sapolsky video, video. It's really hard to be a human being, and we have life challenges. And a lot of you are, have been pouring out your hearts in discussion, and that's, that's awesome. You know? and, and so when I discuss these changes, um, the idea is that it, it can accelerate aging and really um, open the door for age-related diseases, okay? In this article, they call it the phenotypes of, of aging, okay? Just a fancy word of uh, this is what happens, you know? And uh, um, as we course through the course, and I'll finish this, I'm going to show you, um, the article also says, and I think this, you take this to heart, that you can reverse these changes by also changing your environment, okay? Um, bad relationship, shed the asphalt, okay? Boom, just like that, you know? Um, yes, there's healing, you get over it, you know, and you surround yourself with supportive people. The number one thing that you have and in your arsenal in terms of a happy, healthy, and long life is the people that you surround yourself with. Not the numbers, but the ones that are most 
support. All right, so so we all learn through our mistakes. Believe me. Oh my God, my my college girlfriend. Uh, we broke up. We got together. We broke up together. You know what? I, I was just a, a child. I didn't know. And I met her. She's so freaking awesome. All right, changed my life forever. All right, so epigenetics. So this is a really cool short video. They got the British accent. I apologize for that, but they kind of go through the the, uh, the steps. So just watch it and enjoy this. And fact, there's so many videos out there. I could have selected a number of them. They're talking about um, epigenetics. Basically, what it does is it puts these little switches on your DNA. Okay. All right. And um, either you can read the recipe or not. So, so the way it works. Okay. We all have 23 chromosomes. The DNA, one copy from mom, one copy from dad. They're they're different, slightly different recipes for making the same cake. So it's a cookbook. It's a cookbook, okay, um, with 23 um, chapters. Alrighty. Um, if I want to make myself, who do we have over here? I see a banana in the background here. Where's my banana? Where's the other way. There it is. There's my banana. I want to make myself. Um, some banana bread, which has kind of been hot during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, then I got to go to my cookbook, open it up. I got to go to the right chapter for baked goods. And within that chapter, I got to find the recipe for making banana bread. All right. So the same thing with your chromosomes. You have 23 chapters. Okay. I need to make a protein. For making that protein, I got to go to chapter 17. And I got to read the 20th recipe that is in chapter 17. Cookbook is always the same, always the same. Epigenetics determine which chapters you go to within those chapters, which recipes you're going to follow to make proteins. Every single cell in your body has exactly the same chromosome set, okay? Every single cell. Skin, okay? Dr. Walsh's old man skin, okay? Um, brain cells, kidney cells heart cells, lung cells, same cookbook. And yet, because of the epigenetics and the chapters you read, one becomes a skin cell, one becomes a liver cell, right? So that's the most extreme example, okay? And then those skin cells, okay? those brain cells, okay? They're all in um, all those tags have been flipped and then you can have environmental factors, flip them, flip them, flip them, flip them, flip them, flip them and change them, okay? Diet stress, okay, um, exposure to radiation, all these different variables that happen, okay? We're focusing in on um, stress in this class, okay? We'll have a little, little interesting gut to brain extra credit that comes at the end, okay? But we're, we're, we're focusing on stress right now. Okay, so that's just a basic, basic, basic overview. So you, when you watch this video, you, you think about what I'm saying, okay? And then this is kind of a, a really cool, fun, interactive site right here, okay? Um, in this site, okay, it, it gives you a chance to, to briefly learn about epigenetics, okay? So, so what I want you to do, so if you come down here, you see this, this right here is a um, hyper, um, hyperlink, okay, hypertext link. And you click on that, okay? And all right, it, it takes you to this website, okay? So then we're going to go in here, and my suggestion is just, just you know, go through this and, and look at what you want to know. First of all, I think it's this is a really short video in here. It is the bomb. So we'll just watch this, watch this thing together. I'm going to get my head out of the way here a little bit, and let's take a look and to see what the epigenome is all about. DNA contains the instructions for building all the parts of the body. But DNA is only half the story. The DNA in our bodies is wrapped around proteins called histones. Both the DNA and histones are covered with chemical tags. This second layer of structure is called the epigenome. The epigenome shapes the physical structure of the genome. It tightly wraps inactive genes, making them unreadable. It relaxes active genes. So what does that mean? All right. I want to go make banana bread. Okay. Um, 
And so I open my cookbook and I go to chapter, I can't remember the chapter, I said chapter 11, and it's sealed shut by the epigenome. I can't get in there and read it. Dang, no banana bread. That's the way it goes, okay? However, okay, um, if we vary the epigenome, okay, I, I stop being so stressed out. And suddenly chapter 11 can open up <laughs> and I can go ahead and make my banana bread. Making them easily accessible. Different sets of genes are active in different cell types. The DNA code remains fixed for life, but the epigenome is flexible. Epigenetic tags react to signals from the outside world, such as diet and stress. The epigenome adjusts specific genes in our genomic landscape in response to our rapidly changing environment. Pretty straightforward stuff, okay? Um, yeah, a rapidly changing environment. Like out of nowhere, we have SARS-CoV-2, okay, infecting everybody, and we have this COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, you know, just you know, talk about the worst kind of stress, okay? Is unpredictable stress. And I remember that was what came out of the um, the uh, movie, the short documentary from our good friend Robert Sapolsky. You know? We didn't see this coming, and, and the consequences we don't see coming, you know. And it is really hard to manage this stress, you know, and you got to figure out ways to do it. You know? Maybe this class can become some type of, of um, respite for you, so you can come in here and immerse yourself in this stuff. All right, cool. All righty. So, um, yeah, and, uh, and I've been reading the reading discussions, you know. Uh, like I said, I, I just read uh, Natasha's, and it was, you know, it was very heartfelt, and, and and the two stresses from her life, you know, I had the same thing, a crappy relationship blow up. You know, I, I, my head was exploding, okay? Same thing happened to Julie. We both had miserable relationships early on, you know? Luckily, we found each other, and, and so there is a way to swing it back the other way, okay? All right, because I had a big hole in my soul, and then, then boom, I got that. This COVID-19 thing is, is every day. There's some, just something new, you know, every single day. All right, so you can go in here and you can look at this, this concept. There's these interactive exercises. Now, the only part that's a problem is that <clears throat> it uses Flash. So some of you may not have Flash. Okay. All right, so this is kind of fun. All right, it's just an interactive exercise right here. Um, so what we can do, okay, is um, there is a gene called green fluorescent protein. All righty. And um, so what we can, it's a little, little tiny protein that can be made when I'm making the protein I want. So this, let's say this green fluorescent protein is, um, where is it? There's my banana, all right? So that green fluorescent protein is just tagged on to make my banana bread. So every time I make bread, banana bread, there's also a green blob, like you see right here, on top of it. It doesn't taste, change the way banana bread works, it doesn't change the way it tastes. It's awesome, but it's just a way to see it. So we can look at proteins in your body and see how that works, all right? That's how green fluorescent protein is. There's a little noise here. That's what this is. So yeah, turn it off, all right? Turn it back on. Again, you have to have flash to make this work. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, um, okay, I'm going to change my epigenetics, okay? Maybe banana bread is a good thing, okay? But because I'm all stressed out, um, this is what's gonna happen to my epigenome. All closed up, I can't go in there, all right? So um, I can't make the recipe, all right? So you go from DNA to the recipe. The recipe goes to the cook, which is Julia in the other room, and she reads that recipe, okay? She tends to do it right here off her phone nowadays. <clears throat> and she makes the banana bread. You make the protein. <clears throat> but I can't get into it right here, okay? So now I'm going to get all Zen, okay? I'm going to think good thoughts, surround myself with good people. I'm going to go swimming later on. <coughs> Exercise is wonderful, okay? And in doing so, 
I reduce my stress hormones, all right, and we're going out like this, and I'm really stretching out my DNA. So now, you see what I was happening down here? I made all kinds of, in fact, I, I made a Xerox copy, <coughs> excuse me, to make tons of recipes. So for every time the recipe is made, I make the protein. Right, let's watch that again. Okay, I hear them all stressed out. Okay, oops, sorry, come on. There we go, I'm all stressed out. My computer's being a little jerky, all right? And you see, very little protein made in my cell, very little protein that we see right here, and very little, few recipes. All right, I'm gonna go swimming, all right? Open it up, all right? Okay, reducing my stress hormone allows me to do this. We'll show you how that works. More recipes, more proteins, and the cells go, look at all the banana bread. All right, that's how that works. Pretty cool stuff. And then this is verbiage, talking about exactly what I was talking about. So, um, you guys are, are specialists in epigenetics right now. Okay. We, we actually have a faculty member at, at the Davis School. She is the nicest person. Her name, her name is Berenice Benayoun, and this is what she does. She looks at aging, and she's looking at gender differences. And... Um, and how genders will respond differentially to these outside influences that impact aging. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so um, this is right here in Julia's discussion. She talked about the scariness, so I just clicked on that, of epigenetics, okay? And inheritance, okay? Because you know what? Sometimes you can't control everything, you know? She um, had our first child, Matt, okay? Um, and uh, Matt, Matt kind of, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I have profound ADHD, he has ADD, okay? And you know, why did that happen? You know, why did that, what did those genetic tags get turned on, okay? She had a really stressful job. So she worked for the largest law firm in California, was working 17 hour days, and she got pregnant with her first child. God, you know, not that having a child isn't enough, but having a child and, and being all stressed out like that, you know? And then have the, the burden of later on in life going, God, I, I wish I had one less glass of wine or had, had been more of a vegan or all these kind of things. Okay, so what am I talking about? So there's some reading right here, but I, I, it captures it at the very bitter end down here. And this is it right here. No, Julie does not smoke, never has, okay? Here's the mom, she gets pregnant, all right? All right, here's the fetus, Good for my son, Matt, okay? And everything she does is impacting his epigenetic switches, okay? And then, lo and behold, down here, the suggestion of, um, if it's a woman, okay, the fetal eggs, the grandchildren are impacted, okay? And it's a man, maybe the sperm. Right? So a lot, a lot, a lot of kind of afterthought burden there. All right, cool, 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 cool. So you can look through all this. Um, we can look at um, nature versus nurture. How about if we look at identical genetics, the same cookbooks, and then figure out the epigenetic tags by raising twins in very different environments. That's a cool way to do it. And that's what this is all about if you wanna read up on that. All right, here's my second flash interactive exercise, okay? Um, again, you have to have flash in your computer. I have flash in mind so we can kind of run through this. This is a video showing little rodents, little mice or rats, you know, they, they, um, they nurture their pups, okay? So let's just say that here I am, I am Doc Walsh, okay? And I'm a mom, okay? Um, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna um, interactively nurture or not nurture my children, right? So Deep in the brain of a newborn rat pup, methyl molecules, green, silence the GR gene. When it's active, the GR gene produces a protein that helps the body relax after a stressful event. The type of care a pup receives from its mother during the first week of life can change the expression of this gene. All right, what does GR stand for? Glucocorticoid receptor. Remember, Sapolsky talked about cortisol. That's just another name for glucocorticoid. Okay, goes up to the brain. All right, and it turns off the response to stress. And Julie talked about that in her discussion through activating this GR receptor, all right? So um, so, you, so we want that GR gene to be active, okay? So let's see what's gonna happen here. So I'm, so I'm gonna become the mom 
And let's see how many times I lick my pup over its first seven days. So it'd be, are you a nurturing mom or not a nurturing mom? I'm gonna hit start, all right? I'm gonna lick once. There we go. Mm, twice. All right, that's all I'm doing. It looks like you had better things to do. Since you didn't lick and groom your pup very much, its GR gene is still inactive. Your pup will have a hard time relaxing after stress. Your pup's GR gene will most likely look like this for the rest of its life. In fact, the amount of nurturing you gave to your pup will have a major impact on its adult personality. Yikes. Now there's a burden. Okay. So um, because you need to have that receptor to have this feedback turning off of the stress system. So when we're all stressed out, we release this cortisol and it's constantly going back to the brain and saying, can we shut this off? Can we shut this off? Okay. If I'm staring down the barrel of a rattlesnake right here, the answer is no. That overrides the hormones in my, um, in my body. Okay. But if there's a rattlesnake and I release all this cortisol and the rattlesnake disappears, going, I'm at home, I'm sitting in my chair, I'm thinking about going in the pool. The cortisol that goes back to my brain says, hey, can we shut this off? Like, absolutely. But if I have fewer receptors, it's going to take a lot longer for it to shut, shut off. All right. So this, so I blew it on my first job. Right? I learned my second job. Let's do it again. Ready? Choose among the oh, options on the left sorry. to learn more about. Wrong. I didn't want to do that. Let me go back in. <laughs> okay. Let's get back in here. There we go. All it takes is one bad keystroke and you're done. All righty. There it is. Get my. I have to, have to listen to this woman again, but that's okay. Deep in the brain of a newborn rat pup, methyl molecules, green, silence the GR gene. Ready? When it's Start. act... Oh, lick, 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 I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Two, two. Your licking and grooming has made your pup's GR gene more active. This will make it a little bit easier for your pup to relax after stress. Your pup's GR gene will most likely look like this for the rest of its life. In fact, the amount of nurturing you gave to your pup will have a major impact on its adult personality. Surround yourself with supportive people. Bottom line, all right? People that are supportive are constantly licking you as a pup, okay? People that are not supportive don't do anything, all right? In fact, it's detrimental. All right, so that's the concept there. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And then you can look at nutrition. You know, all the, these are all different options over here. All right. Awesome. All right. Okay. Where are we at here? Right, I'm going to get rid of that. This is the article. Now, this article is so thick. It is so difficult to read. However, you will be able to, to go through it and read it. No stress expressed. And just take what you can out of it. Okay. And then you'll do your little quiz here, right here, all right? You can open up the quiz at the same time. That's what I would do as you're reading through this stuff. And then we're going to get in here and we'll talk about the epigenetics, okay? And I, I believe Julia already went in there, okay? And, um, and it did a comment. And I'll do a comment later on too, okay? Uh, we're reading your stuff and we're, and we're totally enjoying it up to this point in time. Okay, where was I? Okay, so it's showing my ADHD. I'm all over the place. All right, so if I click this, it's going to produce this article. All right. So um, it's a good review article. It really is. Okay. 2017 is pretty recent. And um, I, love the, I love the title. Life stress, glucocorticoid signaling. Remember, that's the stress hormone that gets over elevated by your adrenal gland. Right. And remember, the whole axis is I, I look at it. I see it. I perceive it. Okay, I activate my hypothalamus, it activates the pituitary, and then that goes to the adrenal to release cortisol. It's the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or the HPA axis. Okay, all right, so life stress, gluc glucocorticoid signaling, and how am I going to age? My epigen ep aging epigenome, and how all these life stressors set me up for age related diseases all right sadly all right so we you know the best thing you do is is you should take time out for yourself you know 
I was a little too guilty of that most of my life, but that's okay. You know, things worked out anyways. Okay. All right. So, so life stresses, okay, are associated with accelerated aging and an increased risk for developing aging related diseases. This is the phenotype of aging, okay, that we're, that we're going to talk about later on. Phenotypes, just a fancy word that biologists use to confuse everybody else in the world. It just means the outcome, okay? Um, the underlying reason for why it's happening, if you're a biologist, you're always going to say, what molecule goes up, down, blah, 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 is elusive, okay? But we're getting new hints by studying which recipes are turned off and which recipes are turned on, and that's what this is all about, okay? All right. So like I said, the hypothalamic pituitary to adrenal axis, okay? All right, HBA axis is what we're going to hear about. They don't say adrenal here, but that's the most common way of, um, this is the adrenal part right here, the glucocorticoid stimulus, okay? And that's going to change, you know, which recipes are accessible in my DNA because of these epigenetic tags, all right? All right, and that these changes are conducive, all right? Conducive, sorry, conducive to diseases of aging. We'll see what that's all about. All right, so that's what we're looking at here. Read this just really, really simply, okay? Be, see how quick you can read it and take it when you can. They start getting too molecular to say, okay, I'm done. All right, so uh, we've had a major increase in life expectancy, all right? Some of it has been diet, hygiene, okay? Um, doctors tell you you need to start start living a better life and not be so stressed out, yeah, blah, 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 blah. A lot of it also has the fact that medicine um, basically turns back Darwinian evolution, okay? There's no more natural selection, you know? I actually should have been dead when I was 18. I was down in Mexico and I got typhoid fever, you know? But nope, medicine kept me going, all right? Um, I should have been dead a few years ago, you know, in the, the real world when I blew out my knee, okay? Had to have a total knee replacement. Nope, medicine kept me going, okay? All right. When we look at all of our life stressors, okay, um, so those are part of the increase in life expectancy, okay, um, we do do things to treat cardiovascular disease, okay, we have statins, we have stents, okay, we have cancer therapy, we have chemotherapy, radiation therapy, targeted therapy, all right, but why are these things happening? The idea is that things I did as a kid maybe set me up to have this later on in life, okay, if you're a diabetic, Okay, because of all the bad choices you made when you're young, in combination with a genetic risk, okay, your family has a long family line, then you you have a greater likelihood of getting dementia. Did you know that 80, 80, 80 percent of people with Alzheimer's disease have diabetes? Yes. And so there, that's, there's some epigenetics for you, okay, along with a lot of other things. All right. All right. So, um, Life stress is a big risk factor, all right? And that's what we're going over in this class, okay? Um, one thing we heard from the Sapolsky videos is we have this thing called a shortening of the telomeres. Now, um, these telomeres are caps on the end of the chromosomes. It keeps them from getting damaged. If the, chrom if the telomeres shorten, then the chromosomes can open up, and then you can get all these undesirable side effects of mutations and things like that, all right? So that's just one example. Okay, but epigenetics is a whole different ballgame, right? It's separate from telomere sharpening, sharpening all right? All right, so, um, you know, these are all relevant articles, okay? Um, but you just got to look about what they're talking about, all right? Um, chronic caregiving, okay? All right. Uh, perceived stress, interuterine early life stress, okay? We saw that with the Dutch hunger winter, okay? Um, work stress. We're all going through this right now. God, it's crazy. I've never worked so hard before I did all this online. I mean, it's much easier for me to kind of cruise around the, um, the classroom. All right. So um, again, these are all these different stressors in life. And you can just kind of, you know, don't, don't, don't look at the blue stuff. Sorry, just jump around. All right. Um, so there's all kinds of different things that, that, that can come up. Okay. Um, I talked about, um, um, these life stressors, do they put me at risk, okay, uh, for cardiovascular disease? That's my phenotype, okay. Um, tumors, okay, a lot of evidence suggesting that, which kind of sucks, you know, sucks. Um, another stressor is just like infections, sadly, 
COVID-19 is going to have an after effect, all right, on all of us. Just from, you know, if you've, God forbid, got the infection, it's a major physiological stressor, not a psychological stressor. Okay. And now we look at a definition of epigenetic, ah, definition of epigenetic regulation, all right? Um, and this is, uh, you know, uh, a regulation of what recipes are made, not changing the DNA sequence. It's just which recipes are going to be read at any one point in time. All right. Uh, the most common one, there's two types that are the big common ones. One's called methylation. So they talk about this right here. Uh, the Brits call it methyl group, okay? DNA methylation. Okay. You can this results in a modification of that spool that the DNA was wrapped around and compressed on. Okay. Another one is called acetylation. Okay. And there's a lot of people that do diet really like at acetylation. But anyways. So just, you know, try and relax as you're reading through this, okay? All righty. So this is just kind of going through all these things. And you just kind of take it for a grain for what it's worth. I know you're not biologists, okay? Then it gets into um, talking about, there it is, the HPA axis. I told you that was going to come in. And it's, you know, something that we talk about in this class, okay? So I perceive the stress, okay? Sometimes you, I'm just ruminating. Oh, how am I going to pay the bills? All of a sudden, ugh, all right? I activate my amygdala and the amygdala activates my hypothalamus. Okay. All right. The hypothalamic then causes, the hypothalamus causes the release of a hormone. That hormone activates a, uh, a system in the pituitary, releases a hormone. That hormone goes into my blood, goes down my adrenal gland and releases cortisol. That's the HPA axis. Okay. All righty. And, um, In terms of how our body responds to these stress hormones, we have um, this guy right here, the glucocorticoid receptor. Okay. Like I said, up in the brain, it does respond by trying to turn it off. A small amount of activation is not so bad. Okay. All right. Um, it goes into the cell and will change what other genes are going to be transcribed. That's fancy for it goes into the cell and says, which recipes are we going to make? I'm going to make this one, this one, this one from my DNA cookbook. Okay. All righty. So um, I'm just going to show you how quickly I'm going through this. This is how quickly you can do it as well. All right. This is the key. This really gets into a lot of molecular detail. This is the key right here. All right. So it talks, it gives you um, a pretty good feel of, of what's going on. And what I like to, there have been studies. Um, like we said, while these epigenetic changes from your shitty life experiences can be persistent, okay, um, they also are amenable to treatment and potentially reversible, all right? Treatments can be cognitive behavioral therapy, seeing a, um, a very supportive um, counselor, okay, a therapist that will help you work through your problems so you don't ruminate on these problems, um, taking up yoga, Okay, um, getting rid of the bad, bringing in the good. Okay, improving your diet, exercise, listening to music. Oh man, all these things. Okay, alrighty. And for those of us that no fault of our own, okay, um, suffer from clinical depression, studies have been shown that people that take antidepressant medication can also um, see changes into their epigenetics. Okay, so this is, this is all awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. And then we can you know, look at the outcome of that, looking at, at biomarkers like cardiovascular disease and cancer and stuff like that. All right. So this goes into some pretty hardcore molecular biology of, um, of the um, epigenome, talking about, again, methylation. So you just, you know, very quickly go through this, very, 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 very quickly, okay? Um, this is gets into and it gets really thick over here so i would just jump over here and it talks about again this hypothesis that life stressors exert this very very long lasting uh, effect on susceptible places in your genome okay um some can get that epigenetic tag others can't when they talk about age-related phenotypes vascular disease cancer, okay, um, clinical depression, all these outcomes, okay, 
Alzheimer's disease. All right, on and on and on. Okay, so I'm not going to read everything. I just want you to kind of read through this. The question is, is it accelerate? So, so these are all age-related disease. Does your life experience accelerate the likelihood that these diseases happen? So what is the greatest risk for heart disease? Vascular, vascular disease, stroke. What's the greatest risk? Aging. What is the greatest risk for cancer? Aging. Greatest risk for Alzheimer's disease? Aging. All right. So there's a lot of people that believe if we can figure this part out, that we can re really reduce the incidence of these diseases. Okay. Um, I was going to go to Costa Rica this summer. I think, um, I can't remember if uh, um, one of our students was, that's in this class was going to go too. It was going to be one of those immersive courses. We were going to go to the blue zone. We were going to hang out with the longest lived people in the world and try and emulate their lifestyle. Boom. Sorry, we were set to go mid-May and we know, all know what happened in mid-May. Okay. All right, so this is an, a, a, a figure that shows you molecular biology. You don't have to know any of this stuff. No, 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 okay? But aging, okay, is going to modify a lot of these proteins that interact with our glucocorticoid receptor. Stress releases cortisol from our adrenal gland. That comes in and binds the receptor. You have this interaction here based on aging, okay, um, that can reduce its efficacy, all right? That's what that's all about, okay? Um, we have this concept of methylation, and then it shows my glucocorticoid receptor, corticoid receptor, when occupied with that stress hormone, it then comes over here, and then it, um, these are called response elements, and this is a transcription factor, which is fancy for, <laughs> I'm gonna make the recipe to make my proteins. I'm making the recipe to make my banana bread. Okay, so that's what this is all about. All right. So again, don't get lost in the details, okay? So we see right here, we have these changes in methylation, epigenetic aging, changes in, remember the histone, so that my DNA is all bunched up, so I can't even get in there and read it. And chromatin remodeling is a whole different level that we're not even talk about in this class. In the end, it causes the phenotype. What's the phenotype of aging? Oh man, age-related disease aging, cancer, okay? Um, Cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, kidney disease, you name it. Okay? All right. Awesome. These are study after study after study. Now, I really, you know, want you to take a look at, in this article, they do talk about um, highly traumatized African American subjects. Okay? Um, and the amount of stresses they have. And we saw that in the Sapolsky video when they were in Oakland area, in, in the Bay Area of San Francisco, and you looked at the impoverished, highly stressed individuals, okay? Um, and the impact it has to them. And there's so many um, stressors because of um, the culture of not being able to emerge from these conditions um, where um, Diet is, an, is, a, is an influence, you know, there's no access to great stores, there's no access to great restaurants that are healthy. It all has to do with access, access to healthcare, and, um, and it takes its toll. And we heard that in the, in the Sapolsky documentary, it takes its toll. And so um, they, they mentioned this in this article right here. Okay. All righty, conclusion is the best, just like an abstract. They really bring it all together. I don't need to read that for you. But I want you guys to read it. Awesome. All right. So we got through that. We got through this. Okay. Um, this is another class all to itself that I'd love to teach you guys about. But we're back over here. So all right. So now you've done your quiz right here. And then you get in here and you look at our prompt. It says, uh, it talks about the article, uh, how DNA gets modified. First, cortisol can change the expression of genes by flipping the switches. Second, cortisol through flipping these genes creates instability in your DNA, vulnerable insults that can lead to things like mutations that cause cancer or just um, the existing recipes get played out too often, right? So we just want you to discuss the, the sequence coming on right here, okay? Pretend you're a biologist. The, only, the, the best way to, to learn is to articulate, right? So you guys just pretend you're a biologist and you will do fine. Let's see what's going on here. All right, I'm clicking into my discussion. 
Patrick came in already, right, um, came in here and already posted. I'm going to be reading that later. So did Julia, right? Um, if I remember correctly, if I click in here, I look at Julia's. Okay, so she talked about the epigenome. So you could add figures like she did. Okay, um, and um, if I was in student, wasn't in student mode, I could co copy. I'm in student mode right now, so I can't put in my comment. But there it is. I will later on. Okay, how do you make a comment? Okay, first of all. Um, you come right down here. If you want to talk to Julia about what she said, you just click reply. And then you're off to the races, okay? You type away right here, right? Awesome. Let's say, nope, we're not gonna do that right now. Leave page, I hit the backwards browser. I'm gonna create my own thread. You click right here. And then you go right up here and you says, hey, I would put my name. I'm not gonna do it, but I would say John Walsh. Okay. I can't even spell my name. Okay, I'm too stressed out. And um, and then I would make my commentary. I could add a video. I can add a picture. It's up to you. Okay. Um, I hit submit and I'm off to the races. All right, that's it, guys. You guys have done a great job today. Okay. Um, and I will get the next sequence of videos up for you on Monday. Um, but what I need to do is now go to my next class and I'll say peace right on. I'll see you guys next time.